Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And we have another unboxing video for you guys. We have a ton of stuff that has come in uh, today, both through the website and through the store. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start with some of the stuff that came in today. Uh, first of all, we actually had a customer from our website, webuyguns.com in Missouri, that actually made a trip all the way to our store today to bring us some of the firearms that he accepted to sell to us on the website and wanted to make the trip, he said, to get out of the house and also wanted to check out the store. So really uh, humbled by the fact that somebody would drive all that way to come see us, but he did bring us some really cool stuff. So first up, we have a Remington M540X Target in a sort of bench stock. Now these are regarded by a lot of people, especially in the rimfire community, as being really, really accurate 22 caliber rifles. Uh, you do see them in this uh, type of uh, bench rest stock configuration with the sort of the rail down here at the bottom. Uh, they also have them in a traditional stock configuration, no longer manufactured by Remington, obviously, but really, really cool rifles nonetheless. All right, next up we have a Remington 336C, this one in 35 Remington. You typically find a lot of these chambered in 3030, which is originally what I thought it was in personally when I first picked it up, as most of the 336s are. Uh, 35 Remington used to be more popular than it is today. This is a beautiful rifle with a loophole scope on it. Uh, the 336, one of the th popular things about Marlin is that closed top receiver. Uh, so of course your rounds going through the loading gate and your rounds eject from the right hand side, which is not like a Winchester, which is top eject, but also always really cool to see these Marlins. This is actually an early one, earlier one that is JM stamped, so pre-Remington days. So next up we have a Winchester 94. And 3030. Uh, this is factory engraving. Uh, at one time it did have a color case hardening on the receiver um, that is uh, mostly worn off the finish, uh, but still a beautiful older Winchester rifle. And the Winchester 94 is probably one of the most popular deer rifles that it currently even is today and has been throughout history since its inception in 1894. John Moses Browning designed, so probably one of the most popular and still used Winchester rifles on the market. So really cool rifle. Okay, up next is a ZOM 451. This is actually really interesting because it is a, it's a rimfire 22, but it is a straight pull, bolt action rifle. Now ZOM, this would be actually one of the last products that they would commercially produce before production would move over to CZ. So um, they weren't a huge commercial success, but it is an interesting rifle and actually not too easy to find on the market today. So that came from our seller in Missouri as well. It's a very cool rifle. Next up is a Ruger SP-101 in 357 Magnum with the six inch barrel. Um, these are very popular, very nice for hunting. Uh, a lot of deer hunters use these. Um, a very strong and rigid frame and lug, full lug barrel system. Um, very popular 357 Magnum. Probably one of the biggest competitors with the Smith & Wesson 686. So yes. really, really nice revolvers. Next up we have a CZ VZ Visor 52. Not to be confused with the rifle variant, but this is 762 by 25. Now you guys have seen several of these on the channel, both in the weekly use gun review, and actually you've even had a couple of these in the unboxing videos. Really cool, cool surplus firearms, 762 by 25, which is a really hot little round, famously made by the Russians, used in things like the PPSH-41 and their TT-33 Tokarev rifle during World War II. This is a Czech design, very large for what it is, and used to one of a roller, uh, say, roller locking system. So really weird, different, and unique pistol, but fun to collect and not super expensive. Next up, we have a Ruger Single Six uh, that comes to us uh, with two cylinders. So this comes in 22 long rifle and 22 Magnum. Uh, very popular uh, single action rimfire pistol. This one is upgraded with fiber optic sights. Um, and as I said, does have the second cylinder included with it. Um, lots of fun to play for these things. And not that expensive. All right, last up we have a popular revolver that I've actually been getting a lot of lately. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 28. This is a Dash 2. It is also known as the Highway Patrolman in a four inch barrel. We've had 
six inch barrel, we've had a nickel finish one in here. We've had quite a variety of the highway patrolmen. I don't know why they're sort of showing up on the market, uh, at least in our area pretty consistently, but these are really well-made revolvers, really intended for use with police departments, of course, as the name would, would indicate. But also, as far as what the lessons go, they are not ultra expensive but it really good find if you get one in good condition. So that is what we had come through the store today. Let's go ahead and move through the unboxing. All right, guys, getting into the unboxing first, a lot of you guys saw my community post. We did have somebody uh, send us over some other box cutters. We actually tested them out. They do great if the tape is not like triple or quadruple wrapped. So we are keeping our original box cutters, which somebody else sent us who has not come forward to tell us who they are yet. Uh, so our repertoire of box cutting devices is growing, so we definitely appreciate all of that. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. This one comes to us from Ohio. This one is very well insulated. It's a uh, shipped in an insulation blanket uh, <laughs> of some type. There you go. So next up, uh, we have a Smith & Wesson M&P Tactical uh, with a Troy free-floated handguard, uh, custom muzzle brake. Uh, M&P 15s are a nice uh, entry-level uh, to mid-level AR-15. Um, I like mine. It's a good shooter. It's kind of my go-to. Um, just all-around nice AR-15s so if you're looking to get into um, an AR-15 which AR stands for arm light rifle, correct Chris? No, it stands for assault rifle. It does not. <laughs> I am I'm assured, assured that, that it, it does, does not. not. <laughs> yes, AR-15, arm light rifle. And uh, the M&P 15, as Randy said, very, very good entry level rifle. Now this is not the base model. This is an upgraded model of the base M&P 15, which are not very expensive. Now, on the tactical version, of course, they have the the handguard upgrade, the Magpul furniture upgrade, a little bit. Looks like, yeah, free floated. That goes all the way to the end of the barrel. You have the upgraded muzzle brake. Uh, it does come with the uh, Magpul sights on it. So, nice upgraded rifle. So, middle of the road if you're looking for a, a, kind of a compromise between entry level and something high end like an LWRC or Daniel Defense. So, really cool to get that one in, and we will move on to the next one. So, Randy just reminded me we did not talk about the condition of the rifle. So, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Randy, what do you think about the condition? Um, I would call the condition very good to the higher end of very good, possibly. And let me take a look. Some marks on this side. Yeah, I would say very, very good plus. Uh, looks like that's probably been replaced. There's a little ding in the... But, you know, uh, let's see what the customer said. Customer said excellent. I'm not going to argue with it. I mean, there's just a couple minor, 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 <laughs> minor, minor. minor minor handling marks in the finish but nothing really that's a big deal so cool we'll move on to the next one all right up next is one that comes to us from a viewer in new jersey this is actually one that this customer sent us quite a few things i'm actually getting better with this thing look at that look at that very nice <laughs> Uh, All right, we got everything unboxed here. Randy, what's the first one we have in here? We have a Ruger Mark IV 22 long rifle pistol. That is a Mark IV target. Yes, it is. Mark IV target um, comes with the adjustable rear sight. Um, some custom Hogue grips on this. Uh, as you know, the Mark IV has become my favorite Ruger Mark pistol. Uh, for the easy disassembly that they incorporated in this. Um, anyone has ever taken apart a Mark II or Mark III, um, uh, many people have never got them back together again because they're, they're, they're kind of difficult. Uh, the Mark IV, uh, they really knocked out of the park, making it simple to disassemble and clean. Uh, very, very accurate target pistols, um, one of my favorites. All right, the next one we have in here, all right, up next we have the Smith & Wesson model 669, which is a double single action with a magazine disconnect. And this one has four magazines. Um, overall condition of this one, by the way, that last Ruger was excellent and I probably would agree with that, so that's fine. Uh, this one, doo -doo 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 -doo. here it is. 
Marked is very good. I would actually say more good condition. There's definite holster wear, uh, definitely lots of different blemishes, holster wear across the top. So I'd actually call this good. This is definitely carried. I know a lot of these third gen Smiths were used by law enforcement. I don't know if this particular one was or not, but it was definitely used. Um, so I would actually call this good condition. But anyway, we get pictures with the firearms, so I can usually spot those sorts of things before sending the offer. But anyway, cool pistols. Um, I just really like these alloy frame early Smith handguns. I actually kind of wish that they still made them. So uh, the last one up, I talked about condition on that one. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 64, and this one has the heavy barrel on it, 38 Smith & Wesson, or I'm sorry, 38 Special. Um, a lot of these were actually also used by police departments. I remember when I first opened my store, I got in a small shipment of police surplus Model 64s with law enforcement, you know, agency uh, department numbers, you know, engraved on the side of them. So, uh, again, really stout, very, especially with the heavy barrel, has a good amount of weight to it. And in 38 Special, these are actually really easy to control and really uh, easy to handle. So, or I guess that's the same thing, but easy to control, easy to shoot, easy to aim. So, they are really, really good revolvers. This one has Pat Meyer grips on it. Uh, condition on that one, Randy, what do you think? I would call this one uh, good to the high end of good. Yeah, and he said very good, and you know, I kind of agree, good to very good is fine. Uh, it's actually in pretty good shape, so um, no complaints for me on that. So thank you again to our customer in New Jersey. We will move on to the next one. Next up is one from a customer in North Carolina. This is also a customer that sends us a lot of stuff, so big thanks to you if you're watching. Plus. All right, what we have here is a Spanish Mauser. This one chambered in 308. So first, if we look at the Mauser action, uh, which would come out of Germany, a lot of other countries around the world would go to this action, including Spain. They would keep this in production all the way up through. You have things like the FR7, the FR8, also in 308, used as training implements when Spain would transition over to the 70 Model C in about the 1950s. Uh, along with a lot of the other countries around the world. So um, this is, these are very popular. They're not super expensive, but in 308, they are somewhat economical to shoot as much as that can be the case today. But this one is actually, I'm gonna call this one surplus wise, good condition. Customer said good condition. So I'm gonna go ahead and agree with him on that. That is a really cool Spanish Mauser in 308. All right, guys, this is another one from the same seller of that Spanish Mauser. These are actually pretty cool rifles. They're not rare or difficult to find. This is an Arasaka Type 38 rifle. Let's see if I can get this in here. Type 38, 6.5 by 50, is that right? 6.5 by 50, Japanese. Um, as you can see, it is a very long rifle uh, used by the Japanese prior to their uh, use of the Type 99 rifle. So this would have been used in the first and second Sino-Japanese War. And also the 6.5 was somewhat, somewhat of an anemic cartridge compared to other modern calibers that other countries are moving into. Remember Germany with 8mm, Britain with the 303, United States with the 30 6 So they would want to move into a larger caliber, so they would go to the 7.7 and adopt things like the Type 99, which was also much shorter than this, the Type 99 machine gun to use the same round. Uh, but these are really, really cool. They were still used in World War II. They did use any armaments that they could. Um, so this is very nice. So if we look at condition, first of all, the chrysanthemum on top has been ground off, which is kind of one of the first things you look for. Uh, I don't know if it's matching. Uh, it does not appear to be completely matching the bolt and the receiver match, but the front barrel band and bayonet lug does not. Don't know if it's import mark. Probably not import mark, but most of these are bringbacks. But interesting, cool rifles. Uh, I'm going to go with surplus, probably fair condition on this. Let's see what he says. He said good. 
I mean, I'll take that. Um, I guess fair would mean things with like cracks and stuff in the stock and rust, which there actually is none. That's a uh, two piece, this is a two piece stock. Um, so yeah, good is fine as far as surplus guns go. These were used in war. So interesting firearm, happy to get that one in and share it with you guys. Next up is a box from a customer in Texas. Not sure what that is. This is the first on the list. Ooh, that looks nice. That is a Ruger new model Vaquero, which is probably in 45, it is 45 Colt. So this, as you can see, is modeled very heavily off of the Colt single action army, but they did put some modern revisions into the Vaquero line. First of all, you do not need to go to half cock to uh, load and unload the firearm and spin the cylinder. Just by opening up the loading gate, you actually retract the cylinder stop. And there is, instead of a firing pin on the hammer face, you have a transfer bar. So some of these single action purists do not like these. They tend to go with either a Colt or one of the like Uberti, uh, you know, reproductions that are manufactured or copies of whatever you want to call them. Uh, but for people who like the aesthetics and the look, but like the more modern safety features and feel, uh, the Rope Vaquero is a very popular, but this is a beautiful firearm, very high polished stainless finish with uh, Ruger branded black plastic grips and the original box. So what do you call the condition of that one, Randy? I would call this excellent, Chris. And that's what he said, and I totally agree. That is a beautiful firearm. Uh, definitely happy with that one, so let's move on to the next. Let's see what we have here. We have the Canic TP9 Elite with an optic. And remove the bonnet. <laughs> Proper, it's called a bonnet. Uh, Re bonnet. Re removing the bonnet. What's that called again? It is, uh, this is called a bonnet. <laughs> It is the Optic Bonnet. The Optic Bonnet. Uh, <clears throat> Canic TP9 as Elite. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Canic TP9 Elite Subcompact. Uh, with the Optic installed, uh, we see quite a few of these come through here. You get a lot of features. Uh, you've got the front serrations, you have the rail, you have the uh, two-stage upgraded trigger. Um, just very, very nice, and uh, it's quite a common gun that we see come through the store. And the good thing about the Canics is you get a lot for not a lot of money, so they are really affordable handguns. But what do you think about the condition on that one there, Randy? I see no marks on it, Chris. I would say it's in excellent condition. And he says excellent condition, so we're good with that. Let's move on to the next one. I think he's got a couple Let's extra mags. Replace the here. bonnet. Okay, up next is a Glock 23 Gen 2. You're going to notice the old Glo uh, Glocker Tupperware uh, cases that these come in. This is indicative of Gen 1, Gen 2, and very early Gen 3 until they went to the Glock case that they still use today. There's some history on Glock packaging for those who are interested. Generation 2 Glock 23. 40 Smith & Wesson. This is the 40 caliber version of the Glock 19. This one looks like it has some upgraded sights on it. Uh, see three magazines. Really cool handguns. Uh, back when they used sort of the more tenifer finish on these, uh, no finger grooves. So when they went to the Gen 5, that was really a Generation 2 feature. The Gen 3 and 4 had the finger grooves, but no back strap. So really cool pistols. I like to see these older generation Glock handguns. Condition on this one, Randy, what do you call that? Chris, I would have to say this is in excellent condition. And the customer says excellent condition. So that's awesome. We'll move on to the next one. Next up, we have a Springfield XDS in 45 ACP. Um, the S series are the single stack, single stack magazines. Uh, this one has a couple of extended magazines that come with it. Uh, fiber optic sight, um, not a lot to say about this. It's the uh, um, compact version, correct? Yeah, the they, Springfields. They came out with the XDS maybe seven or eight years ago and they were such a good seller in our store. They have now come out with the Mod 2 XDS, but I prefer the first gen. They came out with them in nine, 
40 and 45 and was one of the first handguns that I knew of where they actually made the 9 and the 45 in the same frame size, which is pretty cool. They made them in a 3.3 and I believe a 4 inch barrel. Uh, that's the standard 3.3, but 45 ACP for the size and the capacity, pretty cool little handguns. And I, again, still like the first gens over the second. And they're not uber expensive, so really cool. And that is it. This other box here just had some spare magazines and stuff in it. So thank you to our customer in Texas for these, and we will move on to our last box. Last up from Florida. Home of free will. <laughs> <laughs> We have a bunch of packing peanuts, but we may strategically be able to remove the firearm without disturbing the packing Look at that. Wow, that was surgical. Surgical. Cool. Very nice. Okay, what do we have here? First of all, let's look at the LWRC. LWRC is known for making very high quality stuff. This is the M6. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, 6.8 SPC. Interesting round. Very smooth action. Very nice high quality firearm. There's really not a whole lot to say about these. LWRC is a premium manufacturer like Daniel Defense, or you could even say Bravo Company. Uh, so very well respected firearms. A little bit higher on the price tag as far as AR-15s go, but you do get a lot of good quality there. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one, Randy? I would say uh, very good. Uh, maybe the high end of very good. And he says excellent. Uh, I mean, that's okay. I would say very good, but excellent's fine. I'm not going to nitpick over it. Uh, just a couple little handling marks in it. Next up, this is a Century Arms uh, C15 Sporter. This is not one that I know actually a whole lot about, other than the fact that it is clearly modeled off of the M16, um, the A1. So you have the teardrop forward assist, which is an A1 characteristic. This may actually have been built on an M16 A1, if we're lucky, I don't think it is. No, it's not. I was going to guess that this was built on an M16A1 upper receiver, like parts kit. Century Arms is known for doing that sort of thing back in the day. There is a CH mark on the, I mean, the upper receiver might be, but the barrel definitely is not. There's no Colt markings anywhere no. on the barrel. I don't think it's the right profile. Yeah, pencil profile is correct. Okay. That they would have had, by the A1, they would have gone to the full birdcage, which is correct. The three prong is really part of the XM16. Uh, E2, uh, E1, XM16E, XM16E1, yeah. I'll have to go back and look at that. I thought it was A1. No, the, the experimental was the XM. Ah. There, then there was the M16 used by the Air Force, the M16A1 was used by the Army. The Army wanted the forward assist, the Air Force did not, so the M16 does not have the forward assist. A little bit of trivia there, but really cool. Um, what do you think about, that's loose, oh, it's missing the spring. All right, the spring is there, it's just, oh, it's missing the little leg there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. What do you think about the condition? Uh, I would say overall, Chris, uh, good condition. Yeah, customer says very good, so it's close enough. Uh, but anyway, very cool rifles. That's I love the older retro uh, AR-15s, M16 variants. So cool to get those in. We will leave you guys with that one. Well, that is all the time we have for you today on these guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. Remember, if you enjoyed, please let us know by hitting that thumbs up button. Please also consider subscribing to our channel and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. With that, we will leave you off. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And we will see you guys next time. Next up is a Springfield SDS. SDS. XDS. That's what I said. I thought you said SDS. I DS. Like Carmen DS. <laughs> DS. What <Well, laughs> DS. All right. Last up, we have one from Orlando, Florida. Home of Flipper. <laughs> that was a show. Yeah, it was a Flipper. It was, uh, was it called Flipper? Yeah, it was a porpoise or a dolphin. I'm not sure. it, it Flipper was, was a dolphin. Was a dolphin? But what was he from? Was the show called Flipper? It was called Flipper. It's twins! <laughs> Ha <laughs>
<laughs> Congratulations, Chris. <laughs> Slipper probably ate that instructor. Yeah. I don't blame him, though. Steve Irwin guy. No, that was a stingray. Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez. <laughs> Juan <Okay>. Valdez. <laughs> That's it. The gun is now known as Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez. With that, we will leave you off. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And we will see you guys next time. Damn, that was good. All right, last Free time. Free Willy! <laughs> What's that Michael Jackson song? No, I'm not going down that road again. No, no. The one with, yeah, Free Willy. Free that Willy. That was an orca. That was an orca. Okay. That was an important conversation we just had.